Hello and welcome back. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to set up your own blog. More specifically, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on a Linux server. WordPress is one of, if not the most popular content management systems out there. And I'm going to show you how to install it and set it up every step of the way in today's video. But before we get into that, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video, Percona. If you didn't already know, the end of life date for MySQL 5.7 is happening on October 21st of 2023. And that means there's going to be no more updates and more importantly, no more security fixes for discovered vulnerabilities. If you're still using MySQL 5.7, well, now's the time to consider your options. With comprehensive support and on-demand expertise, Bercona puts you in charge of your MySQL plans. If you're ready to move to MySQL 8.0, then Percona can help you upgrade and migrate seamlessly with zero downtime to Percona for MySQL 8.0, an open source enterprise ready MySQL alternative. Percona experts are available for on-demand assistance as you need it or can handle the entire upgrade process to ensure your database operations remain consistent, uninterrupted and reliable. Plus you'll enjoy truly responsive customer focused support after you upgrade that covers day one and day two operations. If, on the other hand, you'd rather stay on MySQL 5.7 and allow yourself more time to plan your migration, Percona offers post end of life support for up to three years. You'll regularly receive security updates and support from Percona experts to ensure that your end of life databases remain secure. So whether you're looking to upgrade to MySQL 8.0 or stay on MySQL 5.7, Percona is your partner. They're on standby and ready to help. Be sure to contact Percona via the link in the description below this video and they'll contact you to discuss the best options for your business. And thank you so much to Percona for sponsoring this video, I really appreciate it. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get started and set up WordPress. Now the first thing that we'll need for this project is a Linux instance. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is my demo account on Linode's platform. Now I want to be clear though, even though I'm going to show you the process on Linode, you don't actually have to use Linode for this project. You just need a cloud Linux server of some sort. If you already have that, well, you're good to go. But anyway, on your cloud provider of choice, what you do is you create a brand new instance. So in my case, I'll click create Linode. And then here on Linode, what you'll do is you'll actually just select your distribution from the list right here. And in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Ubuntu 2204. Now, obviously you can set up WordPress on any distribution that you'd like, but on my end, I'm going to go with Ubuntu 2204 because that's what I've tested this process on. And that's what I recommend you choose for yours. If you decide to use a different distribution, then unfortunately I won't be able to help you out because that means, well, I didn't test it out on that distribution, but the process is fairly simple to translate to other distributions. So I don't really feel it's going to be that big of a problem. Anyway, I chose Ubuntu 2204, as you can see here. And then here for region, what I recommend that you do is choose the region that's closer to you geographically. In my case, even though I'm in the United States, Toronto is actually the closest one geographically to me, which is why I'm going to choose that one right there. But for you, I recommend that you either choose the one that's closer to you or closer to the audience that you plan on serving. Now, next up, what we're going to do is choose the plan for our Linode instance. And basically the plan is what determines what CPU and resources your instance has access to. Now, unless you have a specific reason to choose a dedicated server, you know, if maybe your WordPress site is expected to be visited by, you know, a bunch of people, but for most of you, I would actually choose the shared CPU type because those instances are going to be a bit cheaper than dedicated instances. And what I'll do in particular is choose the two gigabyte version here, but the Nanode instance, the first one on this list is just $5 a month and that's actually acceptable for WordPress. So that's not a bad choice either. I just like to go with the two gigabyte instance because I like a little bit more horsepower, but honestly, it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. Anyway, I'll scroll down and I'll give our instance a name. I'll just call it WordPress example. That's probably good enough for now. And then after that, what we'll do is choose our root password. For you, I recommend that you create a randomly generated password and save that somewhere safe. But on my end, since this is just an example, I'm going to manually type my password here. 
and I'll be deleting this instance after I'm done recording, but again, just make sure you choose a really good password. That's absolutely important. Next, I'll scroll down. And if I wanted to, I could also enable backups. That might be a good option for you. And if you plan on using this blog ongoing, then I absolutely encourage you to use this option. WordPress is one of those things that you have to always keep up to date. It's very important. But if you're ever late on updating and then a threat actor gets into your server, well, they could cause some mischief. I just recommend enabling backups. It's just a good idea. If it's something that you want to keep around, well, you probably want to keep it around. And in that case, backups are a great idea. For me, I'll just go ahead and leave this unchecked because again, this is just a demo. So I really don't care what happens to this instance. Anyway, I'll click Create Linode. And the instance is provisioning. Now at this point, we have an IP address right here already. Even though the instance isn't fully available yet, we already know what its IP address is going to be. So if you plan on using a domain with your WordPress instance, now would be a great time to point your DNS records to the IP address of your instance. On my end, what I'm going to do is choose the example of blog.learnlinux.cloud. That's what I'm actually going to apply to my instance. I own that domain and it's a great example. Now granted, that won't exist by the time you're seeing this video, but again, if you have the ability to purchase a domain, I recommend that you do that. And once you do, all you have to do is point your DNS records to the IP address. Again, I have mine right here. Now the process for applying an IP address to a domain is something that goes outside the scope of this video because the process is a little bit different depending on your registrar. But if you look at the documentation for your registrar, chances are they probably have a walkthrough there. If nothing else, you could always contact customer service. But anyway, I've already added this IP address to the A record in DNS for my domain, so that part is ready to go. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is copy the IP address, and then I'll open up a terminal, which I already have open right here. And what I'll do is type SSH, and then I'll type in the username. In this case, root, at, and then the IP address. When it comes to Linode, the default username is going to be root, so that's why I've typed that here. Anyway, I'll press enter. I'll say yes, I do want to connect. And then I'll type in my super secret password. And now we're in. Now there's a few things here that I need to do as preliminary steps for setting up this particular server. The steps that I'm about to give you right now are not specific to WordPress at all. These are just steps that I highly recommend that you carry out on your server. Some of these are for security and others are just a good idea in general. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set the host name of my server. Right now it's set to localhost and I would prefer that it actually uses its real host name or the host name that would be a good fit for it. And to set that up, I'll just use a text editor. Nano is a great choice if you don't have a preference. And what I'll do is edit the Etsy hostname file. And by editing this file, well, we're setting the host name. Now, if you don't have a domain, if you plan on just using the IP address, for example, then what you could do is simply call it something like WordPress. But for those of you that are actually using a domain, here's what I recommend you do. You set the host name to be equal to the fully qualified domain name that you plan on using for the server. In my case, it's going to be blog.learnlinux.cloud. That's what my fully qualified domain name is going to be. So if you have a domain, you can simply type that right here, whatever one you want to go with, and then you simply save the file. Now there's one more related file that we have to edit here. It's located at slash Etsy slash host, just like you see here. And what we're going to do is actually set the host name here as well. We want to make sure that the server itself actually maps the name to itself. And I have an entire video about this. If you want to go ahead and get more information about host names and how you set them, but I'll just go ahead and set it right here. So I'll just type 127.0.1.1. So I'm typing an IP address that's still within the address space for localhost, which is why I chose that particular IP address. I'll press tab and then I'll type my fully qualified domain right here. Again, if you are not going to be using a domain, you can simply choose WordPress for yours. But if you do have a domain, then you could go ahead and type it right here. So I'll type the domain just like that. If you're using a subdomain like I am, blog in my case is the subdomain and learnlinux.cloud is my actual domain, then I recommend that you type the subdomain by itself with at least a space in between. So that way, whether you refer to the server as blog or blog.yourdomain.whatever your top level domain happens to be, 
then your server will still respond to that name. Anyway, I'll save the file and exit out. Now, the next thing that I recommend that you do is set up a local user for yourself. Right now, we are logged in as root. That's a bad practice. So what we'll want to do is create a user for ourselves. So I'll run add user. And then after that, the username that I want to use for my user account. I'll just simplify mine down to J, just like that. Next, I'll type in a password for that user. Again, I recommend a randomly generated password. But in my case, since this is just an example, I'll just use my sample password here. And then I'll type it in again. Now that part's done. And for the remaining fields, I usually just skip those. You don't have to fill these out. I'll just keep pressing enter. Enter again. And now we have the user account. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is give my user access to sudo. And that'll help me escalate permissions to root anytime I need to do that. And to set that up, what I'll do is add my user to the sudo group. To do that, I'll run user mod dash lowercase a, and then uppercase g, just like that. We want to add a user to a group, and the group that we want to add a user to is the sudo group. And then the username that we want to add to that group is going to be the one that we've just created. So the completed command looks just like that. Now if I type groups and then my username, as you can see, my user is a member of the sudo group, which means that that particular command actually worked just fine. Now the next thing I'm going to walk you through is installing all the security updates. It's definitely something that we want to do anytime we set up a server for the first time. We always want to start with all the latest security patches already installed. So to do that, I'll run apt update, and that'll cause the list of available packages to be refreshed. And then I'll type two ampersands. That helps me chain multiple commands together. The second command that I want to run is going to be apt and then dist hyphen upgrade, just like that. So basically what's going to happen here is it's going to run apt update. Again, that'll refresh the list of available packages. And then the second command is actually going to install those packages. So I'll press enter. And now the first command is done and it's already run the second one. The apt dist upgrade command is telling me right here that there's actually a fair number of packages that need to be updated. 101 will be upgraded. There's going to be seven newly installed. Four of them will not be upgraded. That's totally fine. Maybe there's a dependency that's not ready yet. Doesn't really matter in this case. I'll just simply press enter to confirm here and that'll cause all of these packages to start the process of installing. And it's going to take a little while here. So what I'll do is just fast forward time all the way up to the end and I'll be right back. Now during the process of installing updates, you might see a window just like this. And it kind of looks like something went wrong. I mean, it's not quite red, but it's a reddish color. It's more maroon, basically, but it almost looks like an error message, doesn't it? Now, if you see this, and you most likely will see this come up, all you have to do is press enter. All it's telling you is that there's a new Linux kernel available that's being installed, and you'll probably need to restart the entire system to take advantage of that. It's just an FYI, so it's not actually egregious, even though it might look that way. But what we'll do is simply press enter to go ahead and confirm this. And the next thing that'll come up right after that is a list of services that can be restarted. And since this isn't even a production server yet, it really doesn't matter. So what I'll do is press enter to accept the defaults here. I just don't care what services end up being restarted. And the process is done. So what I'm going to do at this point is reboot the server. To do that, I'll type reboot just like that. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, we just installed updates. We also changed the host name. We've done quite a bit, but especially I want to make sure that all of the security patches that I have installed as part of the updates have taken effect. And the best way to do that at this stage is to reboot the server. Sure, you don't have to reboot a Linux server for every single update, but we just want to be on the safe side. So I'll press enter right here. And that's going to cause this particular server right here to reboot. I'll just give this some time to finish the reboot process. It takes usually less than five minutes for that to complete. And then I'll be right back. All right, so I think enough time has passed at this point and the server should be online by now. So what I'll do is connect back to that server again with SSH, just like last time. But this time I'm going to use my local user, the user that I've just created. It's a good idea that we stop using root unless we absolutely have to use root. So I'll log in as myself this time. 
And instead of typing in the IP address like I did last time, I think it would be interesting to try to connect to the server via the fully qualified domain name. If it works, then, well, I guess DNS must be propagated. Let's see what happens. So in my case, I'll type the domain right here. So blog.learnlinux.cloud. Let's see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. So I'll say yes to connect to the instance and I'll press enter. All right, so I'll type in the password and I'll press enter and check it out. I am logged into the server as myself and it also recognized the domain name as well. Sometimes that could take a while to propagate, but in my case, it didn't take any time at all. That's really cool. Anyway, at this point, we're going to start the process of setting up WordPress. And to do that, we will need a web server installed. And in my case, what I'll do is install Apache. To do that, I'll run sudo apt install. And then Apache 2 is the name of the package in the case of Ubuntu, at least. So I'll type in my password. And there's going to be some dependencies as well, but that's fine. I'll press enter. And I was able to do that because Y was capital. The capital letter is going to be the default. So since Y was capital, pressing enter just confirmed that I wanted to install those packages. Anyway, Apache is now installed. And to prove that, I can run systemctl, status, and then Apache 2 to check the status of Apache. And as we can see here, it's active and running. That's a really good sign. I press Q to break out of here. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're able to access Apache from the public internet. So back in the browser, what we could do is copy the IP address if you don't have a domain. But in my case, I do have a domain. So I'll type it in right here, blog.learnlinux.cloud. I'll press enter. And right here, we have the Apache 2 default page. The default Apache page is just proof that Apache is working. There's no functional benefit of having this page. This isn't the most exciting web page you've ever seen, but it does confirm that Apache is working. And since Apache is working, that's a great sign because that's what we're going to use in this video to serve WordPress. So one requirement of WordPress is already complete. Anyway, let's go back to the server and actually configure and set up WordPress. And WordPress is definitely going to need a database server. So what we'll do is set that up right now. And to do that, we'll install a specific package. I'm going to go with MariaDB for the database server in this example. So what I'll do is run sudo and then apt install. And the package name is going to be MariaDB hyphen server, just like that. So I'll press enter and I'll press enter to accept the defaults here. There's going to be a number of dependencies for MariaDB, but that's just standard. So now it's downloading and installing. And now that's done. We now have a database service here on our Linux server. Now the next thing we're going to do is configure the database server specifically for WordPress. And to do that, what I'll do is run sudo and then MariaDB. What this is going to do is cause us to be logged into the database service as root. Now in this case, let's not confuse the database root user with the system root user. They're two completely different things. Same username, different purpose. Anyway, I'll press enter. And now we're logged in to the database server. We could tell that because the prompt is completely different. Instead of our normal bash prompt, we have a MariaDB prompt. What that tells me is that I'm now working with MariaDB and not Linux. Now, initially we're going to have some databases already and we could check which databases we have on our server here by typing the following. We'll type show and then databases in all caps and then we'll end the statement with a semicolon. Now the thing is, typing MySQL commands, which is what Maria actually understands, typing those commands, we normally type them in uppercase, but that's not required. If I was to type show databases in lowercase, that would still work just fine. But it is considered a best practice to type SQL commands in all caps. That helps us separate different components of the command, and that's going to make more sense here very shortly. But for right now, just keep in mind that it's a best practice to type MySQL commands in all caps, but it's not a requirement. The semicolon is a requirement and I forget that all the time. But anyway, I'll press enter. And what we see here is a list of databases that are set up here on our server. Now we didn't actually set any of these up. These are default databases that came with MariaDB itself. So we're going to ignore those. But what we're going to do right now is create the database that will actually be used by WordPress. 
And to do that, we'll start with create database. That's the first thing we'll type. And after that, we'll type the name of the database that we plan on creating. In my case, what I'll do is call it WordPress underscore DB. But keep in mind, if you do customize anything here that's different than how I type it, then you'll have to keep track of that on your end. But anyway, I type the name of the database here. And notice that it's in lowercase. And this is where we start to see the difference between the MySQL syntax and anything we might type. So in this case, create database is going to be MySQL syntax. And WordPress underscore DB is just the name of the database. So since we're naming the database, the name doesn't have to be in all caps, but the command portions, those are what we traditionally type in all uppercase. Anyway, the next thing we'll type is default and then character set. And we'll set that to UTF-8. In addition to that, we'll type collate. And for that, we'll type UTF-8 again, but with underscore Unicode CI and then semicolon, just like that. Now I will have all of the commands that I'm using in this video inside the blog post for this video. A link to that blog post will be found in the description down below. So if you would like to copy and paste commands, you can absolutely do that. You could grab all the commands from that article. And for some of you, that might make this process a lot easier. Anyway, I'll press enter and it says query OK. And that tells me that the database should have been set up. Let's see what happens. I just press the up arrow a few times here. There's our show databases command. And as we can see at the bottom there, we have our WordPress database. That's pretty cool. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a database user, a user that WordPress itself will use to connect to the database and use it. For that, what we'll do is type grant and then all. We want to grant all privileges. And the privileges we want to grant are going to target the database that we've just created. So we'll type on. And then after that, WordPress underscore DB. That's the database that we've just created. And we want to alter the permissions of that database. But we also want to add those permissions to everything underneath the database as well. So that's why we'll type dot and then star, which basically means the entire database. Now we want to grant those privileges to a user. Users are also known as grants in this case. And the user that we want to grant these privileges to is going to be called WordPress underscore user. And I'll type at and then localhost. That will confine this user to being accessible from this particular server and only this server. And then identified. By. Then I'll type single quotes here with a semicolon at the end so I don't forget to type that later. But inside the single quotes, what we'll do is type the password that we want to use for this user. Again, I always recommend a randomly generated password. This is just a demo on my side. So I'll just type secret and then password. You definitely should not use that password at all. That's a very insecure password. But again, this instance will not exist for that long. So in my case, it really doesn't matter. Again, on your end, definitely go with a randomly generated password. And this is the last time I'll mention that, I promise. Anyway, what this command is doing right here is it's creating a user. The user will be called WordPress underscore user. And we're giving permissions to that user to the entirety of the WordPress database that we've created. So I'll press enter. And there we go. Next thing I'll do is type flush and then privileges. And that'll make sure that the privileges that I'm setting here have fully taken effect. So I'll press enter. And after that, I'll type exit. I'll also include a semicolon there. And that's going to return us back to the main command prompt here, which we understand is the case because we see that the bash prompt has returned. Now there's one more thing that we need to do to our database server before we move on from that. What we'll do is run sudo and then mysql underscore secure underscore installation. And what this command will do is further customize the database service here on our server and add some best practices to it. It's not going to give us a ton of extra security, but this is, well, really easy to do and there's just no reason not to do it. This will just benefit us and it's fairly quick. So I'll run sudo mysql underscore secure installation. Now keep in mind, even though the database service we've installed is MariaDB, the command syntax you see here is still correct. MariaDB is a drop-in replacement for MySQL, so this command is actually appropriate as I've typed it. Anyway, I'll press enter. 
And what it's going to do at this point is ask us a series of questions. The first of which is asking us to type the current root password. Now it's not referring to the Linux user root, it's actually referring to the MariaDB or MySQL user that's also called root. So not quite the same thing, but we don't have a password for that user set at this time. So for this prompt, what we'll do is just simply press enter. Next, it's asking us if we would like to switch to Unix socket authentication. That's beyond the scope of this particular video right here. What I'm going to do is actually answer no for this one because we want to use standard authentication for this particular process. So I've typed N, I'll press enter. And now it's asking me if I would like to set the root password. Since Y is capital, it's the default, I'll press enter. I actually do want to set a root password here. And of course, you'll set a password here for that particular user. In my case, I'll just take care of that right now. I'll type the password again to confirm. And there we go. We've set up the password for the database root user. And at this point, it's asking us if we would like to remove anonymous users. And yes, that would be a great idea. So we'll press enter here. And now it's asking us if we would like to disallow root login remotely, which is a great idea. We absolutely want to make sure that the root account is not accessible from the internet. That'd be a very bad idea. So I'll press enter to accept the default of yes here. Remove the test database and access to it. I have no intention of using that database at all. So I'll press enter right here. Reload privilege tables. Enter again, and now that part is all set. The next thing we're going to do is download WordPress. And to do that, we'll type wget, and then we'll type the URL to WordPress itself, the download URL, if you will, and that's located at https colon slash slash wordpress.org, and then slash, and then the file name is going to be latest.zip. So I'll press enter. And it's already downloaded. We have the zip file for the installation files right here. It's downloaded and it's ready to go. So that part was, well, really quick. So the download process is already done. Now notice that the downloaded file was a zip file. So to extract that, we will need the unzip command. And that's something we may or may not have already on our server. So what we could do is type command dash V. We want to find out if a command is available. And what we want to do is find out if unzip is available. In my case, it's actually not. If it was, I would have seen some sort of output from that command, but because the command has done absolutely nothing, that actually means that the command is not installed. To install it, what I'll do is run sudo apt install. And again, the package name is unzip. So I'll install that. And it's already done. So if I repeat the command dash V command again, we can see now that we do have unzip installed. It's located at slash user slash bin slash unzip. We don't have to memorize that or anything, but it does show us that it's installed. That's a good sign. Now again, we have latest.zip right here, and we've just downloaded the unzip utility. So what we could do is type unzip and then give it the file name. So the command looks basically just like that. So if I press enter, we're going to see an explosion of text because it's going to actually list each and every file that it extracts as it extracts it, which is, in my opinion, a little fun to watch actually. Anyway, I'll press enter and boom, there you go. Everything has been extracted. And we can see that here. We have the WordPress directory that was not there before, that was inside the zip file. So at this point, what I'll do is actually remove latest.zip since I've extracted it, I no longer need it. The rm command will actually delete a file. And now it's gone. Now, if we do a long listing when it comes to ls, which we could do by typing ls-l just like that, we can actually see that the WordPress directory is owned by my user. Now that might be fine if I was going to serve that file myself, but since I'm not going to be the user that's serving WordPress, that's not an adequate thing to have. So what we wanna do is change the ownership of the WordPress directory. To do that, we'll run sudo, and then we'll type chown. We want to change the ownership of something. We'll use dash capital R because we want to change the ownership of something plus everything underneath it as well. And the actual user I would like to own that folder is going to be the www data user. So it looks just like that. And then I'll type colon. The group name is going to be the exact same thing. 
And by the way, I have an entire video that covers CHO, and if you want to learn even more about this in particular. But basically what I'm doing is I'm assigning ownership of this folder to the user www-data, and the group name is the same. And then we type the name of the resource or the path to the resource that we want to execute this against. In my case, I'm going to execute this against the WordPress directory here. And if I list the storage again, you can immediately see how the output has changed. Originally, I own this particular folder, and now the www-data user owns this folder. Now the next thing I'm going to do is move the WordPress directory into a more appropriate place. So what I'll do is type sudo and then mv for move. I want to move the WordPress directory, and I'm going to move it underneath slash var slash www, just like that. And if I list the storage of that directory, we can see now that we have the WordPress directory there. That's the same one that we've been working with. It's now in the appropriate place for that folder. So now we have all the files that we need for WordPress already installed. It's not going to work just yet, but it is a good step. We're almost there. So I'll clear the screen and let's move on to the next step. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually instruct Apache when it comes to how to serve WordPress. And to do that, we need to create a configuration file for Apache that tells it how to do exactly that. In order to set that up, I'll run sudo and then nano. We're going to be creating a text file and we're going to be creating it underneath slash Etsy slash Apache 2 and then sites hyphen available. And what I'll do is call this wordpress.conf just like that. And since this is an empty file that we're creating, then there's going to be nothing here. So we'll need to go ahead and type everything out. And for this, I highly recommend that you grab this from the blog post for this video because, well, that's really important. If you type everything by hand, you could run into a situation where there's a few typos and sometimes they're hard to find. It's just easier sometimes to copy and paste. I totally understand, but I'll leave that part up to you. Anyway, what I'll do is paste in everything right here and then I'll be right back. And there we go. There's the Apache config file that we'll be starting with. Now what I'm actually doing here is beyond the scope of this video because a full walkthrough of Apache would be a completely different video of and by itself. But as a short summary, what I'm doing is I'm creating a virtual host that's going to act as the virtual host for the WordPress instance that we're setting up. Basically, this config file is going to instruct Apache how to serve WordPress to our users. So I'll save the file and I'll exit out. Now, simply having the config file in the directory that we've created it in is not good enough by itself. We have to actually enable that particular virtual host. And to do that, we'll run sudo and then a2 and then end site. And we'll type the name of the file that we've just created. We don't have to type the full path to the file because Apache knows where to look for it. But basically what this is doing is enabling the WordPress config file that we've just created. So I'll press enter. And right now it's telling me to have this take effect. We have to reload Apache. I'm not going to do that just yet. We'll take care of that later. Now, the next thing we'll do is disable the default site. We're not going to be using that because this is going to become a WordPress server. So the default Apache 2 start page that you saw earlier is really not going to be of any value to us. So to disable that, what I'll do is run sudo and then a2 and then dis site, short for disable site, as you could probably guess. And the file name is going to be 000-default.conf. And that particular file is located where Apache expects to find these config files. The same directory where we've created the Apache config file for WordPress, for example. So we're going to disable that. And again, it's telling me that I should reload Apache. I'm going to ignore that again. We'll do that later. But now we actually have the configuration in place for Apache, which is pretty cool. There's still some more things that we have to do though. We're not quite done. The next thing that I'm going to do is walk you through the process of installing some required packages that are needed for various features and adjustments and things that WordPress expects to find. So to take care of that, what I'll do is run sudo apt install. And there's going to be a number of packages actually. So what I'll do is just paste in the list right here. And here's the list. On your end, if you want, you could just grab these packages from the blog post, or you could pause the video right here and jot this down if you'd like. And as soon as you're ready, you can simply press enter. And just like some of the other commands that we've ran so far, there's going to be some dependencies here. Nothing is out of the ordinary, so I'll press enter. And so far, so good. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is enable a specific module for Apache, a module that WordPress actually requires. And that particular module is the rewrite module. And to enable that, I'll type sudo and then a2nmod, just like that. And like I mentioned, the module that I want to go ahead and enable is the rewrite module. So the completed command is going to look just like that. So I will press enter. And now instead of asking me to reload Apache, it's actually asking me to restart Apache. And if I do restart Apache, that also takes care of the previous messages that we've seen that were asking us to reload Apache. So what I'll do is just simply restart Apache right now. And to do that, I'll run sudo and then systemctl restart Apache 2. And this command will not only restart Apache itself, it's also going to make sure that any changes we've made to Apache will take effect. So I'll press enter. And then we'll check the status of Apache to make sure that it's still running. If there was a typo or anything like that, then it's going to have failed. And we wanna make sure that's not the case. So I'll run the same command that I did last time to check the status of Apache. And actually, it appears like everything's fine. It's active and running. That's a really good sign. So again, Q to break out of here. And we're back to the command line. So at this point, I'll switch back to my browser here. And we actually still have the default Apache 2 page right here. And this is only on the screen because I haven't refreshed the page since I showed this to you last time. But if I do refresh the page, what we should see is the setup page for WordPress. Let's see what happens. Wow, that's a great sign. So we actually have WordPress running on our server right now. So all we have to do here is just fill out each of these sections that comes up. It's going to walk us through the process. And the first question here is going to ask us to choose our language. So in my case, it defaulted to English here. So you just choose whatever yours happens to be, and then you click continue. So now it's just giving us a summary of what it intends on doing. So we'll click let's go. Now the first thing it's going to do is ask us for the name of the database. So what we'll do right here is type the exact name of our WordPress database. If you recall, what I did was I named it WordPress underscore DB. That was the name that I went along with. Next, we'll type the username for the database user. That was the long permission string that we added to MariaDB earlier. And in that example, what I did was I named it WordPress underscore user. We basically just want to make sure that everything matches right here exactly to how we set up the database earlier. And the next thing that we'll type right here is the database password. Hopefully you have a more secure password than I do, but I simply went with secret underscore password. Anyway, for the database host, it's going to be localhost exactly as it already is. And we'll also leave the table prefix as the default here as well, and then we'll click submit. At this point, as long as we've typed everything in properly, we could click this button right here to run the final installation. So I'll click on that. And so far so good. It's asking us to name our WordPress site. So I'll just give it a generic name, just as an example here. For the username, you want to definitely make sure that you type a username that's not, well, generally used. So root and admin are not good examples here. For me, since I'm the user of this particular blog, I'll just type my name here. And then here we have a password. This password has been randomly generated for us. So what I'll do is just copy this. And then I'll just go ahead and jot this down offline. We definitely want to make sure though that we save our password in a very secure place. Next, we need to type our email address. This will be helpful if we need to reset our password or something like that. So I'll type in mine right here. And right here we have a checkbox for discouraging search engines from indexing our blog. Now for most of you, you probably don't want to check this box. If you do check this box, then your blog is going to have a much harder time becoming popular. So what I'll do is click install. And so far so good. I'll click log in. I'll type in my username here, and then I'll paste in the password. And check this out. We are now logged in to our completed WordPress site. But there is a problem I highly recommend that we fix. And that issue is, well, our connection is not secure. That's not good. We definitely want to make sure that we have a secure connection. One thing you could simply do is purchase an SSL certificate and install it on your server, and that will absolutely take care of this problem. But what I'm going to do is show you how to get a certificate for free. We're going to do that with Let's Encrypt. 
and that will absolutely take care of this problem. So let's go back to a terminal. When it comes to setting up Let's Encrypt, that's really easy to do. I'm going to give you all the commands right now. And the first one is going to be sudo and then snap install. We're going to use the snap package manager to install certbot. These instructions are actually coming from the certbot official webpage and documentation. So credit to whoever put those commands together on that particular website for what I'm going to show you right now. But anyway, what we want to do is install core. And then after that, we'll run sudo, snap, refresh, and then core. That'll give us the core snap, which is a requirement for certbot. So I'll press enter. And now it's downloading. So, so far so good. And now it's done. Now that we have that taken care of, what we'll do is run sudo and then snap install. We'll type dash dash classic. And the snap package that we want to install on our server right now is the certbot package. So our completed command looks just like that. I'll press enter. And now that prerequisite is taken care of. There's one more command that we need to run when it comes to setting up certbot, and that's to create a symbolic link for certbot that'll help other applications that aren't aware of snap packages understand where to find the certbot binary. Anyway, what we'll do is run sudo and then ln s. We want to create a symbolic link, and we'll type slash snap slash bin slash certbot. That's the location of the certbot binary that we were provided from the snap package. And then what we'll do is link that to slash user slash bin slash certbot. I'll press enter. And now certbot should actually be ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is actually get the certificate installed for our domain. And this will only work if the DNS entry for your particular domain has been updated already to point to the server. That's a prerequisite. As long as that's already the case, we could go ahead and proceed. And to do that, we'll type sudo and then certbot. And then we'll type dash dash Apache. And if we're successful, this should actually result in an SSL certificate for our site. I'll press enter. And what this will do is ask us a few questions here. The first of which is what email address we want to receive renewal information to. If ever there's a problem with automatically renewing the cert, then we definitely want to be aware of that ahead of time. So what I'll do is type in my email address right here. Next, I'll agree to the terms and service. I'm not going to go over the actual terms here. If you want to read that, then you could go ahead and do so. So I'll type Y for yes here. For this here, I'll just choose N for no. I would rather not receive their email newsletter or whatever it is they're trying to send. So I'll press enter for that. And then next up, we are going to type the domain name for our server. In my case, it's going to be blog.learnlinux.cloud. So that's what I'll type for mine, and then I'll press enter. And we're done. We should actually have a certificate set up on our site. Let's go ahead and see if it works. So here we have our blog. I'm going to refresh the page and check it out. The connection is now secure. So what I'll do is just paste in my password and I'll log in. And there we go. Now we not only have a WordPress blog, but also we have a WordPress blog with a secure connection. That's really cool. So there you go. At this point, you should have your very own blog powered by WordPress, which is great. As you can see, WordPress is really easy to use and it's very effective and I hope you enjoy it. If you did find value in this video, then what I hope you'll do is click the like button to let YouTube know that you like this video, because what that might do is help this video find its way to someone else. You never know, maybe somebody else wants to set up their own blog as well. And I hope you'll click the like button to help spread Linux learning. Either way, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. I have some other videos coming very soon. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video.